downtown Burlington this morning going on a bit of an art and culture tour and we're at Frederick Fine Art and it's right here basically at the corner of Brant and Lakeshore. Beautiful, beautiful art gallery type shop and I'm here with Violetta and we're showing some of the artwork right now with who the shop is named after, Frederick Watson. Tell me a little bit about Frederick. Well, Frederick Watson is a friend of mine and he passed away three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, before his passing, he left me a few pieces, mm -hmm. the original. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I have the pieces right in the window mm -hmm. and a few right there by the side of the mm -hmm. door. And that's Frederick there in the picture? Yes, that's Frederick in the picture and Sonia Bada. And Sonia Bada from Bada Museum. And those are all some of his beautiful pieces. And uh, tell me a little bit about that technique that he painted there. Okay, this is a, actually not an original. This is a G clay, but it's like an original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all of those so pieces. Mm -hmm. this is a print. They transfer it in wood and they put some kind of oil on top. So mm -hmm. they'll give you that illusion that it's just an original. Oh, I see. Yes. I see. Now you also do restoration, um, and that's something that you do personally as well. Yes. So let's walk over to this piece actually, because I found uh, this piece. What, how old would this piece be? Uh, this was in 1890. 1890. This is a, a German uh, painter. Mm -hmm. And basically when we get this, this is already deteriorating. And right. the canvas is already in such a bad condition. Mm -hmm. So what we did is actually we put another canvas on the back of it. Mm -hmm. We put a, a beeswax to basically support it support right it, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and the frame is all damaged all corners mm -hmm. so as you can see it's all now done properly that must be yeah. very time consuming and well, very delicate work right yes it takes about six to a year to to finish wow. one big one like this but it's so worth yes. it very big it's irreplaceable yes yes it is. it's an important piece sure now yes. another pe another thing that you also do in the shop is um framing custom yes. framing which is people love and need so let's head back to this area. This is our framing. We have Roma. We have actually uh, um, Narsen and Jewel. Mm -hmm. and this is another <coughs> restoration that I did. More restorations yes. again, old yes. frames. Very, old. very old piece. As you can see, all the details already sure. deteriorating and everything. So. And, and, and what leads to a lot of the deterioration over the years with paintings? It's, it's light for sure, right? Uh, lighting, also the smoke, mm -hmm. also sometimes it's just being old and yes. they use a different kind of material then. That maybe doesn't, so, isn't yeah. as resilient as now. Right. right. Well, Violetta, thank you so much for allowing us into your shop. There's so much here. It's beautiful. Again, it's right down in Brant in uh, Lakeshore and uh, it's called Frederick Fine Art. And we'll be back. We have a whole tour of downtown Burlington. We're getting all artsy this morning. Oh, thank you. Morning. Feeling dizzy yet? Oh my goodness, apparently this is equivalent to how you would feel when you're in space. So I'm never going there. <laughs> I'm here with Kim and uh, we're at the Joseph Brent Museum. We've been here before and we're in this area. Last time we were here, it was full of all kinds of really cool pinball machines. Right. And this is a, a sort of a roving exhibit. So this exhibit is here until when? Till September the 18th. Mm -hmm. And it's all about health and space. So looking at astronauts and how they get chosen to go to space and then everything they have to deal with and all the training mm -hmm. that they have to do leading up to it. We can't even fathom what they actually go through, right? We only hear little tidbits. Now this particular exhibit talks about their bone density. That's right. So looking at the amount of time you're in space and what that actually does to your bone density. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things in the exhibit are tactile as well. Mm -hmm. So this, you can feel it mm -hmm. and it shows um, before the space mission. Right. And then the next one, if you touch okay. it, it, you can see the spaces of loss. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And then they're doing tests after they get back to see, does that come back? Right. And how does that relate to osteoporosis? And so I think the space, it also looks at health. Sure. And Diet and, and nutrition is absolutely. such an important component when they're up there. Definitely. And isolation as well. Isolation. So yeah. We've all had a little bit of the taste of isolation <laughs> in the last <laughs> year and a half, haven't we? Yeah. But it really is. It's your mental condition. I mean, this, these, these guys and, and men and women go through a lot. That's right. And let's talk particularly about this. We, I, mean, they, I like the sign says he's a Canadian all-star. So tell me a little yeah. bit about him. So David St. Jacques, he's actually um, one of the astronauts you'll hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. But he is a, he was a doctor and engineer, an astrophysicist. Wow. And he was chosen out of two men, out of over 5,000 to apply to become. He can, he can work the Canada Arm too. Mm -hmm. He can spacewalk. He's a doctor while they're up there. Wow. 
So, and that's the thing, these people, they're so well versed in, in multifaceted. Exactly. Right, when they're out there, and it's just because it is not a, a simple task. No, it's not. It's not just like flying in an airplane. No. <laughs> exactly. So, this, work, this exhibit is so interactive, which is always nice. Um, and you can kind of weave your way all the way through and really learn a little bit more about space. But also, we can't forget, <laughs> this is the Joseph Brent Museum, but it is about Burlington and the history. And I love going into this area. This area is always here for people to come and check out. Yeah, people love this. A lot of visitors, um, you get a lot reminiscing about their parents at the Branton or their grandparents at the Branton. So yes. we capture all those stories as well. Because mm -hmm, the Branton was right here on the water. That's right. right? And a lot of people, the, the famous, famous singers, performers that were here, people loved to dress up back in the day in the 50s and 60s. And um, that's why we have the costumes to show the, the times. And it was just a really fun time. Even my mom speaks of that time. And it's a shame that we don't have that anymore. I know. I know I would have loved to have gone to it. Me too. Me too. If we could just go back in time, right? So this is, again, right here, downtown Burlington, right off the water, uh, just down from Spencer's here. And uh, this is the uh, Joseph Brent Museum. And there's so much to see and do. If you want to check out the space exhibit, it's here till September. So you have to get in soon because we're in a COVID time warp right now. September is coming. It's around the corner. So make sure you come check it out. Thanks so much, Kim. Thank you. Good morning, we're back in downtown Burlington on our art and culture crawl here and we're back at uh, Agora Marketplace. This is down on John Street here just by Lakeshore in Burlington and I'm here with Ali, the owner of this really cool, eclectic, fun, artsy store and we're just looking at some of the uh, blown glass which and is a very, glass. very, yep. very special to you. It is special mm -hmm. because blowing a glass is like a big talent. It is. It, it requires two people minimum mm -hmm. to blow a glass. Mm -hmm. You cannot wake up in the morning and decide, hey, I'm going to go blow a glass. Right, Not like a happen. painter with a. You'll need a partner. Exactly. And, and some of these pieces are so different. Those pieces are all made in Canada. The ones hanged on the wall, made in Nandas, with their kiln technique. Hmm. Nice couple, Angela and Fred. They are the residents of Dundas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The arch piece is created by Lisa Getz and Tom Cadmore. Mm -hmm. They are the residents of Oakville and they blow the glass in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Also, they compete internationally. Wow. They don't have time for that, but I do that part for them. Right, of course. I send the pieces sometimes. Oh, do you? You do it for them. Oh, isn't that? So? And I mean, there are some special pieces here. Yeah. And when, what's one thing I've noticed with art is you really have to look at each individual piece because everyone has a certain, you know, feeling about a piece of art and something's very specific to each person. This one here, this blue one down here. This is created by <clears throat> Alisa gets, mm -hmm. especially to compete in Europe because Europeans like to show, mm -hmm. showcase their right. art when it comes to compete with Italians, mm -hmm. especially. Oh, sure, absolutely. You need to come up with like pieces that needs to be exceptional again. Mm -hmm. same, mm -hmm. same with that piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to show these little robots up on the shelf up here. These are created by Tom Cadmore. Actually, one of the robots went into the competition and got into the final. Wow. Before I got into the competition, I kept calling Tom. It was overnight. We were preparing the paperwork, application, mm -hmm. and I cannot reach him. I have to name the, you know. Name the art. I'm, I have to name the art, and I go, Freezing Tom. Oh, oh, did you just what you call? <laughs> We're walking through your store. There's so much to see. This is another artist over here. You said she can paint pretty much anything. She can pretty much paint anything. That's one of the one of my favorite painters mm -hmm. because she can she can basically cross the border. Mm -hmm. can so someone can give a picture. Faces, right. animal. Right. She can paint on a mug she can basically paint on anything wow the talent and there's just so many pieces to look at in here um you also have a lot of crystals people love crystals and i uh, you know crystals are very special they have a lot of um significant powers to them and and in beautiful jewelry as well 
Bill, how would you like to wear these shoes to work one day? <laughs> I'm here at the uh, Art Gallery of Burlington. We're, we're flying our tour here. We're ending the tour of downtown Burlington uh, at the most perfect spot. I'm here with Suzanne, and you're the senior curator for the Art Gallery. It's nice to be back in here again um, during these tough times, and we're in one of those most, most beautiful exhibits, so bright and colorful. Tell me a little bit about this. Thank you. Well, it is so nice to be back mm -hmm. and to have our space open. Yes. We're a community center. We're yes. a hub. So being able to open our doors again, and especially to the exhibitions that were mm -hmm. in lockdown themselves. Yes. So this is called Invisible. It's an exhibition of two artists, mm -hmm. uh, Mira Setti, who did the paintings, mm -hmm. and uh, Marina Dempster, whose shoes you see here now. It's curated by Hitoko Akara. And the work really looks at um, fashion. Mm -hmm. Fashion is, is armor to protect oneself, uh, for uh, identification, to be able to, to move forward in the world and feel powerful. Look at that, and those porcupine quills coming out the back of this those, that pair of shoes. Like, so creative. When you take a look at the fine, fine art detail, the work that's gone into these shoes, very time consuming. Yes. So it's a process called yarn painting, which uh -huh. is a pre-Columbian uh, technique, right. a witchel uh, technique of beadwork that's inlaid into beeswax. Oh. So you've got beadwork, but also, as you can see, teeth. Or <laughs> porcupine yes. quills. Oh yeah, those shoes. Fur, look antlers, at, Look at the top of buttons. those. Those are teeth on the top of those shoes. Yeah. And as you said, it would be nice to be able to <laughs> wear a pair of, of these, <laughs> other than the fact that I feel like I've given up heels now. Yeah, I know, right? It's yeah. just like, meh, especially after Old being uh, out of heels for a long time. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the paintings themselves as well. Again, it does, the exhibit really goes nicely together because of the colors. Yes, yeah, so okay. it's really big, bright pops of color. Mm -hmm. But it's looking at uh, the fashion sense in the streetwear of aunties, mm -hmm. where Mira was looking at her aunties and seeing the, <laughs> like the pattern mashup, mm -hmm. the cultural mashups that were happening every day in the street, and using them as inspiration. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful, and it really is nice for for us here in Canada to be exposed to this, right? To really see. Um, you know, how other people live and, and some of the beautiful colors and textiles that are used. Now this exhibit is on until August 27th here it is. in Burlington mm -hmm. and so people can come check this out. So the art gallery is open, people can come in. We're open, our studios are open nice. and uh, we have two other exhibitions on right now. Okay. Uh, one is um, Larry Weand, it's mm -hmm. called Peeling a Sticker Off of an Overripe Pear. Yeah. It's, uh, I love that. Rug hooking, and again, <laughs> it's, it's very bright and colorful. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a film work uh, by uh, Manira El Kadiri, and it mm -hmm. is a four minute film. It's a cinematic experience, so if you've missed the movies, please come to the AGB. Yes. And it's wide open, you get an opportunity to have a really visceral, Wonderful. Um, immersive experience in the film work. Oh, we just love having uh, some, uh, some normalcy brought back to our lives here. Um, we are wrapping it up here in downtown Burlington at the uh, Art Gallery of Burlington and your front shop is open as well so people can see all the beautiful, beautiful little gifts and uh, maybe something for yourself as well. No, you cannot buy those, but I know you want to. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks so much, Suzanne. Thank you.